before we begin uh, there are two announcements one is that there are mega projects posters in the poster display please go and visit those posters and uh, also please collect posters uh, on the NIUS uh, astronomy program for undergraduate students from uh, Aniket. Please there in the audience. Okay, so uh, this is a special uh, session in which uh, we are, which is in the memory of Professor uh, Padmanabhan who passed away in uh, September 2021. Uh, Sishadri, or Sishadri will be uh, summarizing uh, and talk about his uh, life and uh, his scientific contribution in this session. So, Sish, over to you. Thanks a lot, uh, Harvinder. Um, rarely in history, a genius is born. And such a thing happened on 10th of March, 1957, when Thanu Padmanabhan was born. His mother's name was Lakshmi Ayer and his father's name was Tanu Ayer. And they came from a lower middle class family and they were not really financially uh, well off. So it's not just a minute. It is, oh, it is not changed. Oh, okay. Now, this is the famous Padmanabha Swami temple <coughs> in Trivandrum. And it is of great tourist as well as religious importance. On the left side, you see some thatched buildings. Behind these thatched buildings is a network of lanes. And one of the uh, lanes is called Putan Street. And uh, this is where Padmanabhan, or Paddy as he was called, spent his childhood. Uh, are you able to see the, is the is top thing being blocked or something? It's okay here. Okay, fine. Okay. So, uh, Paddy did his schooling in a very ordinary government school in Trivandrum, and which had not many facilities. In fact, often he used to say that uh, whenever it used to rain heavily, and in Kerala it will always rain heavily, um, there will be a problem with the roof of the school and they will get a holiday and they will all be very happy as children. Paddy, however, excelled in his studies. And after schooling, he joined for pre-university in Government Arts College. And there he received the National Science Talent Scholarship, which is a very, which was a very prestigious scholarship. Uh, of course, now it has been replaced by several other things like KVPY, Inspire, and so on. Those days it did not exist. And I'm sure Paddy would have got these also if they existed. The scholarship per se was not much, but of a great help to a lower middle class family, which was not financially well off. The, this flower called Paddy began to bloom very soon after this. The National Science Talent Scholarship uh, recipients have, have used to have a summer camp and Paddy got an opportunity to interact with teachers and students from different places, or I should rather say that teachers and students from different places got an opportunity to interact with Paddy, and his brilliance began to be noted. Another thing which happened in the college was the existence of a Trivandrum Science Society. Now, this Trivandrum Science Society was run by students and Paddy used to talk about it with great relish and recall the experiences. And it was clear that he really enjoyed working in the science society. And many students have benefited from this science society. Then Paddy also, uh, just a minute, some problem here. Just a minute, sorry. Yeah. So during the BSc days itself, Paddy started uh, studying, uh, look, you were going through Feynman lectures in physics, as well as Berkeley volumes. And he also started with general relativity by Mizunathan Wheeler. And it's very interesting that, uh, you know, during the at a time, at a stage, where usually students start keep struggling with Newton's laws of gravity. Here was the boy who was 
doing who are studying general relativity and from a book which is no other than Meisner Thorn Wheeler. And Paddy always had this attitude of uh, not just learning, but learning and simultaneously using it to develop something innovative. So for, for him, learning and developing something further went hand in hand. And so learning and knowing something was not an end in itself. And this was evidenced by the fact that while he was still studying and reading general relativity all by himself, he came up with his first publication when he was in BSc second year. And the, uh, the, uh, the, the publication was not any mundane topic. It was on the solutions of scalar and electromagnetic wave equations in the metric of a gravitational and electromagnetic waves. And uh, what I have uh, underlined that gives his address for correspondence, which was his house address, first Putan Street, which I mentioned earlier. And this was in 1977. Paddy was still in his BSc. And in this paper, briefly, what he showed was, if you have an electromagnetic wave, which is traveling through a curved space time that is caused by a gravitational wave, then two new waves are generated. And one of them has the same phase dependence as the original one, and the other one shows a transient character. I will not go much in, uh, into this. My main aim was showing it was, uh, was to say that Paddy was already in a very advanced stage of research right at the time of his BSc. For MSc, he was in Kerala University itself. And during the BSc, he had already started with Landau Lipschitz, the famous uh, nine volume series. And during the MSc, he continued this much more thoroughly. And uh, one thing which he used to mention, and I would also like to mention, that uh, you know, when I was in, uh, you know, some say 30 years ago, uh, one could uh, photocopy things very easily. So what happened was when we liked an article, we photocopied it and then we forgot about it. Now we have graduated to a, uh, another stage where we download the paper and forgot about it. Those days photocopying was not easy, especially in Trivandrum. And it was also very expensive. Paddy sat in the library, worked through Landau Lifshitz series, made notes, and this style of Landau and Lipschitz was very clear in his style of working. Whether it was papers, whether it was books, lectures, or even general discussion about anything which is happening in the world, he always had a kind of a novel approach to explaining and understanding this. And during the MSc days, he had a peer group and he used, he used to very fondly remember his peer group. And the idea, the whole philosophy of the peer group was to uh, self-read and with, with mutual discussion. And two of the people who he has often, whose names he has often mentioned are VP Nair and Rajiv who were there in this group. Now there was another interesting thing, experiment which they did in this uh, MSc. In Kerala University, at least at that time, some of the specialized areas like quantum field theory were not there. However, there were students who were interested in teaching. And since it was not there in the syllabus, there were not the teachers who was, were not there who could teach it. So this a small group of people decided that they will learn and they will teach the students. And this is in lieu of the teacher teaching the students and it was a proper course. And the teachers would sit in the class, learn the subject and teach it to the future generations in later batches. I am not sure how successfully this whole model worked out, but definitely it was a novel and an extremely innovative way of uh, imparting knowledge. In 1979, uh, the year when he completed his MSc, incidentally, he also, it was also the uh, centenary year of uh, Einstein. 
And uh, right as an MSc student, he participated in the Einstein Centenary uh, meeting. 1979, he joined TIFR. Uh, just one minute, some urgent call. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, in 1979, he joined TIFR and there was a very interesting uh, incident there that, uh, uh, you know, usually when students come for the interview, the institute, the interview panel asked them that we could offer you this if you agree to this one. Here it was the opposite. Paddy put condition that he would join TIFR only if he can be supervised by Narlikar for his PhD. Well, he was so brilliant, they said, fine. He joined Narlikar and started working in quantum aspects of general relativity and cosmology. His brilliance was recognized within an year and he was offered a faculty position in TIFR, which was called research associate. In fact, I would like to mention that there are two uh, things which happened. One was this thing about he being offered the faculty position, which was a very good thing. And he was also hit with a personal tragedy when his uh, uh, elder brother who was very young suddenly passed away. And once Paddy has mentioned to me that at that time he was, uh, he had just, he had not yet got the position. He was uh, toying with the idea of quitting physics and maybe join IAS. At that time, this offer came independently and he could continue uh, in physics. Okay, so now I will summarize uh, briefly some of his uh, uh, contributions. Uh, clearly his contributions were so many that I can only, I could only pick and choose a few of them. Uh, so because it was Paddy and he could work in all of these and as mere mortals uh, like me, one can't even understand all of them. Okay, so I, I, I picked up a few of them which I could understand and put it here. The, for his, uh, during his, after he joined for, uh, to, to, uh, after he joined TIFR for PhD, he started, he's, the work he started was on for quantizing the conformal degrees of freedom uh, in gravity. And so it broadly fell under the class of quantum cosmology. So uh, briefly, if this is the action for uh, gravity, then uh, one could, one can write the line element d square as an overall factor of a conformal time times a Minkowski metric. So the action could be expressed in terms of the conformal factor omega. Now, if you actually substitute this in this integral and reduce it, the action takes the form of a scalar field action uh, and uh, with the scalar field being omega and could uh, can actually do the quantum mechanics of omega and thus one can actually uh, have, uh, want, and this was a novel approach towards quantum cosmology. So this was during his uh, PhD and later with his student T.P. Singh, he had further developed this uh, idea in the context of semi-classical gravity, I mean, semi-classical cosmology. Year 1983, Paddy completed his PhD. I mean, remember he completed his PhD as a uh, faculty member. On the personal front, another very nice thing happened. He married Vasanti, who was also a student in TIFR. And she was a student of Ramnath Kausik and was working on dark matter in the universe. Now, Paddy, and Paddy got interested in the area which Vasanti was working on. And they had collaboration by which Paddy entered cosmology and was always, and as always, made great contributions in cosmology, as we all know, in course of time. In 1985, he was kind enough to accept me as his PhD student. And uh, there are some interesting uh, things which I would like to mention here. In 1983, I joined TIFR. Uh, and in TFR, in those days, there was no Homi Baba University or something. We were all registered with Bombay University. 
and uh, the registration in Bombay University happened about a year and a half after you joined TFR. So in 1983, August, I joined. And in 1985, while Paddy and see, Paddy was just four years older to me. And our relationship were more like just friends. And we used to chat on coffee table. And once uh, he just asked me, so what are you going to do for your PhD? We were just discussing. And I said, I'm interested in cosmology. And it suddenly occurred to both of us that since he was a faculty, I can register with him. And he was kind enough to accept me as his PhD student. And he was not a registered guide because probably Bombay University never come, came across a situation where a person uh, submits a PhD in 1983 and becomes a guide in 1985. And so some bottlenecks, administrative bottlenecks had to be sorted out. And after that, I had the fortune of becoming his first PhD student. And soon T.P. Singh, who joined a year later, also joined him as a PhD student. Now, uh, as I said, our difference uh, was just four years between me and Paddy, and uh, we had a very close relationship with him as well as his parents. Now, in 1978 to 1980, there is this new uh, inflationary paradigm which was developing. Uh, uh, Sato and uh, some more people de started developing the inflation and finally it was given a complete shape by Alan Guth in 1981. And soon after this, namely in 1983, Paddy started working on this and started guiding a student. And this student was none other than me and I was very lucky that uh, you know, I could work with Paddy and uh, get into this subject which was uh, you know, just coming up. And uh, the work, which I mean, I mean, uh, it goes without saying that a lot of work, the uh, the ideas mainly came from Paddy because he was just too good. So one was the we are probing the de, or, uh, the origin of density perturbation in inflation, and the interesting thing we had devised a mechanism in which we could keep the amplitude of perturbation small, and. We also looked at some several conceptual issues in inflationary universe, and we had addressed them. Now here, again, I would like to mention some interesting uh, aspect of Paddy. When Paddy feels that something is right, he will not dilly-dally. He will go fully committed to make sure that either people point out a mistake or they accept that it is correct, and it was shown in both these publications, that's why I have mentioned it. In the second one, we had actually uh, raised questions about some serious conceptual issues which people had in Horizon. And clearly, because of this, it was taking time to publish. And it took one year. And Paddy, um, normally one would have just withdrawn it and gone to another journal. But Paddy wouldn't do it. He fought it and then asked for an editorial board uh, decision and got it accepted after a year. And the paper, which was earlier one, had a more interesting story. It was a famous journal. And this is one of the very nice uh, works, very nice ideas of Padmanabhan, where basically uh, this had the seeds of a lower limit of length scale, which was the Planck scale. And then uh, the referee report was a very non-technical report. And uh, it was a very casual report. And it rejected the paper. Again, normally one would have just withdrawn it and gone to another journal. But Paddy wouldn't do it. He, I still remember, he wrote to the editor saying that a journal of your standard, I did not know, has such substandard refereeing. And he actually went on to answer his questions. And the next letter, it was accepted. Okay, So that shows the kind of a conviction which he had about what is right. Now, in 1992, after 13 years in TIFR, Paddy moved to Ayuka. Ayuka was set up in 1988. And in four years, Ayuka had grown in stature. And Paddy's joining Ayuka, obviously, accelerated its growth and increased its international visibility enormously. Now, it, uh, the, uh, so I had said that I and T.P. Singh were the students who were the, in uh, TFR after he joined uh, uh, Ayuka. He took two more students, which is Jasjeet and uh, Sriram Kumar. Uh, with Sriram Kumar, he, conti he continued 
uh, various extensions of uh, quantum fields in curved space time, which he was already doing, and semi classical gravity. With Jasjeet, he had started in a big way on, uh, um, on uh, large scale structure. So, what they had developed was a semi classical approach to clustering of weakly nonlinear state, I mean, uh, uh, cl clustering at the weakly nonlinear scale. Earlier, there were some approximation methods, which was called Zeldovich approximation, addition approximation, and frozen flow approximation. Paddy and company got this innovative idea of something which they call the frozen potential approximation, in which they have, after the linear evolution of the perturbations, the potential function is constructed and the potential held constant with time. And you assume that as the particles are guided through the potential, we keep the potential constant and through this constant potential, these particles are guided to their ultimate position. It was an approximation, but it was a very nice approximation for doing a weakly nonlinear stage of evolution. The, the another, um, another field which he was always interested from the beginning was on quantum aspects, uh, quantum uh, physics as seen from an observer in an accelerated frame. So very often when you used to talk, um, it used to just come back to this topic, you know, and he was, uh, he really liked this topic. And basically in this, what uh, his approach was that uh, since in a constant uh, observer who is having a constant acceleration, the trajectory is a hyperbola, a part of the space time is uh, not seen by the observer. And so you integrate over some of the modes and a pure state for an inertial observer becomes a thermal state. And so there is a temperature associated with the space time and that is a function of acceleration. And by analogy of a uh, Schwarzschild metric with an accelerated frame, uh, Paddy developed uh, uh, new interpretations of Hawking temperature. Now, as I said, this topic was closest to his heart and he would ultimately use this concept to a new interpretation of gravity, which was called emergent gravity. Now he said that gravity, so I mean, since uh, this particular thing, was really, he was proud of this. I would like to spend a few slides uh, qualitatively explaining what his approach was. He said that when we are trying to quantize gravity, we are doing the, the approach has been wrong. He said gravity has to be looked more like thermodynamics or fluid or elasticity in the following sense. He said that when uh, the usual approaches to quantum gravity have failed uh, because in his own words, we use right methods to solve the wrong equations. And the analogy he gave, as I said, so was you take elasticity, he said elasticity arises ultimately from atomic and molecular interaction at a fundamental level. But quantizing the equations of elasticity will give me phonons, which is in solid state physics, it will not still give me the physics of atoms. And he said that this is precisely the mistake we are doing while trying to quantize gravity and our approach has to be changed. And he said the right approach to describe space-time is not geometric language, but thermodynamic language. Uh, and he explained this in the following way that if you have particle, point particle mechanics, we have a concept of energy. In thermodynamics also, we have a concept of energy. But in thermodynamics, we have an additional concept called heat, which does not exist in particle mechanics. And this basically happens because in the case of a point particle, there are no internal degrees of freedom. Whereas in the case of heat, the heat is basically arises because of internal degrees of freedom. And so if suppose you have the heat density, uh, which is script H, you write it as temperature into entropy per unit volume, you can write it as pressure plus density. And we know from general relativity that pressure from, uh, we know from the structure of uh, energy momentum tensor that P plus rho is nothing else but T alpha beta L alpha L beta, where L alpha L beta are null vectors and T alpha beta is the energy momentum tensor. And as I said, an accelerated frame can have a temperature associated with it. And so he says 
the space time also has to be treated as having some kind of a heat density, the way we approach thermodynamics. And he said it is just not to do with the black hole, it has to do with any space time. And that was a very interesting point. And so what he said was, if suppose you have a trajectory of an accelerated observer, the person, the trajectory is a hyperbola. And if you have a freely falling observer, uh, this observer sees vacuum, I mean, quantum vacuum fluctuations and does not see a horizon. Whereas an accelerated observer sees a horizon, he sees a thermal fluctuation, he or she sees a thermal fluctuations and these thermal fluctuations define the temperature of space-time. And the temperature of space-time in the gravity are re related by the equation given here. And all these uh, arguments extend to a black hole case also. And so he said, as Boltzmann said, the delta E is number of degrees of freedom times uh, Kb, Boltzmann constant time temperature. And Paddy were very insistent that while it is the right equation, it is misleading. And the reason why he said was the following, that if you take temperature to the other side, when you, it, is, it is the second equation, which is the good way of representing it, because on the left-hand side, we have pure thermodynamic uh, quantities. On the right-hand side, we have pure degrees of freedom. And this relates the thermodynamic parameters to degrees of freedom. And now he said that Boltzmann did not know the details of the atomic theory in, uh, of counting the number of degrees of freedom, but the thermodynamic arguments, by thermodynamic arguments, Boltzmann could predict the number of degrees of freedom. And Paddy said that the approach of gravity has also to be similar, that gravity is a thermodynamics-like quantity, and even without knowing certain details of the microscopic structure, we can still predict the degrees of freedom of gravity, in particular, uh, he had derived that the time evolution of gravity has to do with number of degrees of freedom in the bulk minus number of degrees of freedom on the surface. But that's a kind of a detail which I will not go to. So there were many more works and with many other students he has worked. I will not be in a position to summarize all that. Uh, I just gave a glimpse of some of the scientific, uh, some of the research contributions uh, from the point of view of whatever I could understand easily. Next came his contribution, which was to do with, uh, which had to do with his books. Now, actually, if you look at the variety of books he has written, it actually gives you a glimpse of the very broad uh, perspective of physics which he had. So let me take it one by one. The, uh, is there a, Okay, I don't know whether there is a laser pointer here. Okay, so on the right side, there is this book, Gravity, Gauge Fields and Quantum Cosmology. And this was, uh, I think the first book which he had written, that was when I was doing my PhD, it was by Narlikar and Padmanabhan. And uh, very nice book. And I remember having go, uh, learned a lot by going through this book. Now I will not go in chronological order, but I would mention that you have on the left side, three books, Theoretical Astrophysics, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. This is a, I would say, a Bible of astrophysics. And I don't think it is any exaggeration to say that these are the Landau and Lifshitz for astrophysics. And these books are widely used throughout the world in leading institutions. Now, in the late 80s, he he had, uh, okay, second half of 80s, he was already getting into structure formation of the universe and um, true to uh, Paddy's uh, characteristic, he soon came up with uh, structure formation of the universe, uh, which is in the top I have mentioned. And uh, personally, I have benefited a lot because uh, around that time, I had started working on micro background and uh, I had gained a lot and I learned a lot from this book. There are also this. There is also this book, Gravitation, Foundation and Frontiers, and Cosmology through uh, and Astrophysics through Problems. They are completely pedagogical at 
uh, level because once uh, the, the, the uh, okay, these astrophysics books were also textbooks, but these were more of more, uh, I won't say basic, but more for, uh, about gravity and uh, cosmology in general. And they were also very good and many students have benefited from that. Now he also used, have, has written books which are not um, I, I won't say popular books. I mean, I'm not saying it's unpopular, but they're not popular level books, but at the same time, not as serious as these were. They were quantum themes. And then the after the first three minutes, very the title is very interesting. The Weinberg, Weinberg wrote the book on first three minutes where it ended with nucleosynthesis. And a lot of things happened after nucleosynthesis. So basically uh, everything like structure formation and all, you know, which happened in ionization and all, I mean, uh, recombination and all, are covered in this book. Then there is this book called Sleeping Beauties in Theoretical Physics, which was again, uh, it is again, not to do with astrophysics, but a very broad areas of physics in different areas of theoretical physics. And not only in astrophysics, he had written a serious book on quantum field theory. Okay. In addition, there were two books which is the story of physics and the dawn of science. And I would like to, uh, to say a few words about these two books also. Now, I think the story of physics developed, uh, started as a cartoon series in a journal, in a magazine. Now, I think this was, the, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, this was the, uh, the series which was, which, uh, was uh, being made uh, when I was doing my PhD. And once, uh, you know, Paddy used to go to Jahangir Art Gallery meet uh, Keith Francis and they used to sit and discuss about each issue. And I had the fortune of accompanying Paddy uh, in one such thing. And I saw the, uh, the uh, meticulous way in which they planned everything. And of course I had the dual benefit. One was to listen to the discussion and uh, the other thing was to enjoy hot pakodas from the cafeteria of Jangir Art Gallery. Then there is this other book, The Dawn of Science. Now, in all these books, Paddy has acknowledged the enormous contribution of Vasanti, who was a silent supporter at the background. Dawn of Science was, uh, is a book which Paddy and Vasanti have come up together. And again, it, uh, it gives a glimpse of various aspects of uh, development evolution of science. So this was just to tell you the variety of things which Paddy could find. And uh, one comment about these books, often people asked Paddy, uh, how do you write so many books? And he had a very interesting answer. He used to say that if you, say, if you, if you uh, write, uh, say, uh, one page a day in one year, you have a book of 365 pages ready. Well, it all sounded very nice theoretically, except that uh, he was talking only putting down the page, but he had all this already on his head. And that is where at least I have a problem to follow this. Now, another characteristic of Paddy was that he had a very uncompromising uh, attitude <coughs> towards maintaining academic standards and academic standards were not negotiable. That did not mean that he would discourage people. He will he was very encouraging, but will not res, uh, resort to false praise. And he used to call a spade a spade. At the same time, just because a person could not do physics, he didn't look down upon the person. His attitude was identify your interest and ability and work wholeheartedly towards it. And something which uh, he has mentioned specifically to me, don't aim to be the best aim to give your best. And it, this always reminds me of the uh, of Bhagavad Gita where they say Karmani Vadika Rasti Ma Now he, uh, he contributed a lot to scientific and academic administration. To name a few, he was the chairperson of the GMRT Time Allocation Committee. He was the convener of the DST Advisory Committee for Indian participation in a giant segmented mirror telescope. Then uh, he did a commendable job in the experiment, this such an experimental area in spite of being a theoretical physicist. And that was typical Paddy. Because again, his interests were broad as well as his ability. And another thing was, he always wanted to take to perfection whatever he took up. He was also an INSA council member. 
He was a member of Commission 1945 of India of International Union of Pure and Applied Physics and later became the vice president, chairperson and then the president. The, he was also the chairperson of INSA IAU National Committee and the vice president of Commission 47 on Cosmology. And he was a member of the COSPAR and the vice president of division in Galaxy and Cosmology in IAU. And another very, very important contribution he made was being the Dean Core Academic Program in Ayuka for 18 years. And that, that, that contributed a lot for maintaining academic standards. He got lots of national and international recognition. He got the Padma Shri from the President of India. So uh, we used to joke to Paddy that it was very easy for them because instead of Shri, Padma, Naban, they just had to switch Shri and Padma. It became Padma Shri. Uh, he also got the Infosys Prize, the SS Bhatnagar Award, JC Bose Fellowship, INSA Venubapu Medal, and Lifetime Achievement Award from the Government of Kerala, and many, many more. He was a Sackler Distinguished Astronomer. Uh, Al, uh, spelling is wrong. Al Khwarizmi International Award. He was the uh, uh, Third World Academy of Sciences uh, Prize in Physics and several others. And another, another thing which he got was the Gravity Research Foundation Awards. Uh, you know, this is an annual Gravity Research Foundation essay competition which is held. And uh, even when I was a PhD student, he used to tell me, you know, you should also write and so on. So we used to write. So, but Paddy got once the first prize. And if I'm not wrong, the time when he got the first prize, the second prize, I think, was T.P. Singh, which, who was his second student. Once he got the second prize, twice the third prize, twice the fourth prize, and four times the fifth prize. There are only five prizes given. And then there are lots of honorable mentions, and that he has, one has lost count. He has got many, many times. And uh, about his students, uh, his students have moved into various uh, areas. Eight of his students are in higher educational institutions of teaching and research. And this actually reflects the importance to pedagogy with Paddy always stressed on. Six of them are in research institutes. One in an innovative school education called CFL, and one has moved to industry. And he has mentored many project students. And the variety of academic pursuits which people have uh, taken up is, again, because of Paddy's training and influence, and which was, as I said, the philosophy of whatever you do, give your best. One often thinks good physicists are too serious and no sense of humor, but not Paddy. He had an excellent sense of humor. Often he used to, he used this humor to drive home a point, even in serious discussions. And the Paddy Gharana today consists of about 16 students and more than 40 grand students. Sorry for the spelling mistake. And it reminds me of this whole network of banyan trees. The banyan tree sends out roots and each of them grows into a tree in itself. And even when the original trunk is no more seen, it lives through the uh, other trees which have grown from there. Einstein told about Gandhi. Generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this walked the earth in flesh and blood. About Paddy, one could say, the future generation would be awestruck and surprised almost to the extent of disbelief that a single person did so much of work and that too in diverse areas of physics. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Sish, for the uh, concise and uh, even then uh, comprehensive sub uh, summary of life and scientific contribution of Paddy. So uh, maybe we have time for some uh, comments. And anyone has a comment? Would you please raise your hand? An online uh, audience can also use the raise hand option to add to this. Thank you, Sishaji. That's uh, a wonderful summary about Paddy. 
Thank you. So I had opportunity to work with him. He was a uh, convener of GSMT, uh, which was constituted by uh, the DST that time. It was in 2008 and 9, 10, up to three years. And the way he pushed us to write the documents is mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> one night, one o'clock, I got a call from him. Can you just complete this three page uh, white paper on this? We need to have a meeting uh, in the DAE. And then he said, I am in the airport going to Brazil to attend the meeting. So, <laughs> so he was worried that I was waiting for my director's approval to send it to him. That was uh, Hassan. So he called him up. Then Hassan calls me. So, <laughs> so I just sent it to him. So he was quite prompt on those things. And then he reads very well all of these things. So though he's a theoretician, but then he was quite um, into that, um, you know, the experimental astronomy too. So observatories, telescopes, and developmental aspects. Yeah. Um, I don't really, uh, uh, I never really had the pleasure of knowing him personally, uh, but uh, being a student, I uh, did uh, read his website web page and I have like a remark, um, as you mentioned, um, he had a great sense of humor. And one thing I did read was um, in his publications, he has some sort of commentary. He says, um, back in the day when people were working on the CMB, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the people in the field were using computers the way a drunk car uses, uses a lamppost for the power and not for illumination. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sarvesh, and I am also gone through the website, and there are some math problems that they are mind blowing bad problems. And I used to do in my graduation and it took me like two to three days to solve each problem and they were mind blowing. So if anybody wants to check out those problems, they are seriously mind blowing. You won't get the solution on internet. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we should take some questions from the online audience. There is one question by Sean. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Maybe we can uh, take it first. Anyone else besides Paddy who has got a, a faculty position at TFR without a PhD? <laughs> okay, so Aniket says that in those days there were quite a few people. So, uh, oh, I see. I see. I didn't. Oh, is it? I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Okay, Arvind the Paranjwe has read uh, hand. Hi, Erwin. Uh, Erwin, I can't hear you. Erwin is uh, on mute. Ah, okay. Um, uh, wonderful talk, Shesh. And I just would like to add a little bit that uh, Paddy was chair of the public outreach programs committee. Oh, of yes, that is one aspect which I completely left. I just could not uh, accommodate all what he did. That's no, so, so let me add a yeah, little please, bit on yes. that. Yeah. He had given us complete freedom as to what we would like to do. And one very interesting uh, support that he gave us was about the mobile planetarium. Oh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, at, at uh, Ayuka, we were very, uh, the staff was very less. We were only two or three of us. And how to take the mobile planetarium around? So what he allowed us to do was that uh, we had um, we invited volunteers to learn how to use mobile planetarium uh, that we had, and then we just gave them the planetarium. Idea was that you take and bring it back. Oh. And I think more interesting was that he he told me that if planetarium is used and it's get torn, I have no problem. We will find another planetarium, but let it be used as often as possible. And that complete confidence, and with this. I am glad to say that we use this planetarium far too often than uh, most other places. And I suppose this is one particular experience that led me to uh, Mumbai Planetarium. Thank okay. you. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Uh, Indulekha? Hello. 
Yeah. Hello. I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, the photograph which you showed about of the physics department where he did his MSc uh -huh. of Karyavattam, uh, the university department, but uh -huh. he did his MSc at University College Trivandrum. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, it's an <laughs> entirely different place. Very oh, old. I place. see. I see. I see. Okay. That I thanks. I didn't know this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Photograph of the physics department ah, itself, okay. not only the okay. steps, but okay. I have sent you, uh, Divya has shared, I sent to Divya and he has sent you oh, yes, thanks, in front thanks. of the physics department. That is uh -huh. one point. Uh -huh. uh, the other point is uh, you were wondering about this theoretical physics uh, specialization for MSc, which yes. VP Nair, Paddy and yes, all started yes, at yes. Uh, University yes. College. Yes. Uh, it dealt with, you know, a slightly uh, went one step ahead from whatever is being taught in MSc. It contained group theory. Uh, huh. Statistical mechanics, non-equilibrium, okay. uh, quantum field theory, uh -huh. and uh, gravitation, uh, general relativity from Landau and Lefschetz. I see, so, I see, I see. Uh, there was a reduction in the number of hours of experiments which we had to do, uh -huh. and there was a 125 mark theory paper which you know pulled okay. in some of the marks from the experiment side. Okay, I would recommend it. Oh. It's mostly self-study and. Okay. Uh, there is one person who should be particularly mentioned in the context of the Trivandrum Science Society, that is Govindan Sir from University College. Ah, okay, okay. He was, okay. The, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the blessing behind this <laughs> okay. okay. Trivandrum Science Society group. Okay, okay. He inspired all these people. Okay. They were brilliant to begin with, uh -huh. but, yes. you know, he yes. was there. Uh, Indulekha, can I ask you one thing? Uh, yes. In the Trivandrum Science Society, uh, you were there when Paddy was teaching and so on, right? Definitely. Ah, because in fact, yesterday I sent you a message just to confirm this, but I think you didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Paddy used to mention this, you know, that Indulekha used to be one of those people who used to be a school kid who used to come there. <laughs> yeah, from 10th class. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Paddy used to mention that, yeah. Thanks a lot, Indulekha. Uh, I think we should uh, move on. There's one last question from audience. There are none. Uh, I can't see any hands raised. So thanks a lot, uh, Sesh. Thanks. And we will have. Uh, thanks.